Hello and welcome to a quick video tutorial detailing some of the more advanced functions of XPatter because I know personally I use XPatter a lot but I would not be able to use it as much as I do if I hadn't figured out how to do some more advanced functions that really I couldn't find good videos or anything uh, telling specifically how to do a couple things that I really needed to use XPatter effectively for you know emulating the keyboard so I'm just going to do a quick tutorial of some of the more important things that are just missing and you know you can't find it and it's not really explained well but uh, hopefully after this video you'll be able to use XPatter to play a lot more games and if, if you want to uh, if you're watching this you probably want to right uh, this is my ESO setup because I was just doing a video for ESO but uh, I'm gonna go to new <clears throat> Okay, so the first thing I'm going to cover is button hold. And what a button hold is in games like, uh, what's a good example? Like Halo, uh, when you hold, well, when you press the X button, you reload, and then you can hold the X button to get in and out of vehicles and all that stuff. So <clears throat> you can do the same thing using X Pattern. And that's what I'm going to cover first because it's probably the most important and the most difficult thing to figure out for X Pattern. Uh, so, I'm uh, going to jump right into it, starting with, going to use the A button. Uh, my buttons are arranged just like they are on this uh, interface here. That's my right trigger, that's my right bumper, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're going to start with the A button here. Normally, you select the button you want to assign, and you just assign a button to it. Easy enough, right? Well, this time, what you want to do is go to the Advanced tab here. Now this is where things get complicated and this is where you need a good explanation as to what these things do but I'm going to try to keep it pretty brief so this isn't too long of a video but uh, I want you to be able to understand what these what what this does so you can use it on your own. So basically <clears throat> you need to go to the assignments and then you have this uh, blocks here and what you want to do is you're going to need to use three of these uh, buttons or whatever I don't know what to call them functions is what I would call them as a programmer but I don't know what they would call them um, anyway this is a hold zone this is a release zone and this is a wait basically this means anything you put in this zone is triggered on the release of a button this one means it's triggered on the holding of a button and this one kills the sequence so what you're going to want to use is first use a release zone press the key that you want to be used first in the sequence so I want A to be pressed when I just tap the A button so put an A and then put another release zone and then the next thing you have to do is click each of these uh, release zones set the first one to point zero one the, it's the lowest you can set it to <clears throat> and then set the second one to at least point two you can set it to point three, but I wouldn't set it much higher than that. Um, but at least set it point two or higher. That seems to be a pretty good uh, time frame because what this means is you have to tap and release the button between point zero one second and point two seconds for this to activate. If it's held down for even slightly longer than this, it won't activate that. So uh, you can play with this a little bit to see what works for you. I did and I decided point two was a good time frame. After that you want to add a hold zone and set the hold zone point zero one seconds higher than the end of your release zone. Okay. Next I'm going to want this to hit uh, B. So I just tapped B on the keyboard and then put a weight and set the weight about point nine seconds at least 0.9 seconds higher than uh, the hold zone so I'm gonna set this at 0.3 okay so that's it that's all you need to do to have a, a button press and a button hold so now I'm going to hit OK and then X this and go to notepad to demonstrate so when I tap the A button it puts A when I hold the A button it inputs a single B and something to keep in mind if you need the B key to be held like I'm gonna hold it on my keyboard right now so it would do that uh, you need to remove that weight at the end of that sequence and I'm gonna show how to do that really quickly so you just go back to the button 
go to advanced and just remove the weight don't put a weight if you need the bu second button to be held um, you're probably not going to need that for many games but you will at some point I'm sure so with the weight it only presses it once without the weight it will hold the B button like this so now it's holding it okay that's it for the button hold now you know how to set two buttons or two keys to one button on your controller um, something else I will point out really quickly is you can rename these keys so like I could say this is A or B and it'll appear right here just for you know a visual representation of what your things do A B whatever you want to set it to you don't have to mess with that I've started doing it just because it helps me remember what each key is for in game <clears throat> okay the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is uh, set selector and I use this for Elder Scrolls Online specifically um, so what I'm going to do is select my right bumper button and then I'm going to go to advanced set selector and then here's where you might need a little bit of uh, description okay so set to one way means it will go to set to and it won't come back so I'm going to demonstrate that really quickly. Oh yeah, also these numbers down here are the different sets. So set 1 is default and then you have set 2 all the way to 8. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to set this to 1 and then on set 2 I'm going to set the X button to 2. <clears throat> now you'll notice that the right bumper here has some text in blue. I could never read it but I assume it says 2 and an arrow pointing forward and that means that goes to set 2 but there's no blue here so what that means is when I tap the right bumper it goes to set 2 but it won't come back okay and now I can hit the 2 but I can't go back and hit the 1 so that's because that's a one way if you want to be able to go back and forth between two sets you can go back to set selector <clears throat> and instead of one way you can either select two way or while held Two-way just means it works like a toggle, so hitting right bumper once goes to set two, hitting it again goes back to set one. While held is probably a little more useful as for gaming, means while it's held it will go to set two and then when you release it will go back to set one, as you can see right here. So that's really helpful and that's, that's exactly what I use for Elder Scrolls Online and the abilities. Um, so yeah, uh, if you need to use that, that is there for your use. I guess really quickly I will also demonstrate these other two things, although they probably are pretty obvious. Toggle means if you have this check, check marked, like, how do I say this? If you have that check marked, when you tap the X button, it will hold down one. And then when you tap it again, it will release it. So it works like a toggle switch okay so I'm gonna disable that turbo means while it's held it will repeatedly tap it so if you need you could ideally you could use this um, in shooter games to you know full auto fire handguns or whatever to be a cheater basically <laughs> you can also adjust the delay so you can make it slower or you can make it ridiculously fast so enable that if you want to I'm not going to. I haven't used. Uh, I've only used it for one thing, and that was for crafting an ESO. Um, I use turbo and toggle together to auto craft, so I don't have to sit there and tap R forever. Um, the other thing is rumble. If you want your controller to rumble when you're holding down the button, you can enable it, and you can adjust the uh, percentage of how much each motor will rumble when that button is held. I use that for the right trigger in Elder Scrolls Online so that if it makes a vibration feel when I'm holding down the right trigger to do a power attack. So that's pretty cool if you want to use that. And that's it for the advanced functions on the buttons. The next thing I'm going to quickly, hopefully quickly demonstrate is the mouse. Because you're going to need to set the mouse to be able to play games, <clears throat> to play any game really using the controller. So to set a mouse you can set it to either thumbstick which is what these are. This is my right thumbstick. This is what I usually set it to. 
This is what I always set it to. To do that, click the little tool next to it, and then you can set it to WASD for movement or arrows, and then they have these mouse settings, normal, inverted, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to select mouse normal, and then now when I move my right thumbstick, it's moving my mouse. But it's pretty slow. Really, really slow. Going to be too slow for playing first-person shooter games, definitely. So to change the speed, go to mouse settings. <clears throat> From here, you can adjust the speed left and right, and you can adjust the speed up and down. I usually set it to 80, 60. Give it about, well, if you're playing on a widescreen, give it about 20... Uh, integers between the two just because you don't need as much up and down speed as you do left and right uh, I recommend using look camera that's what it is by default I don't notice a difference with cursor spring uh, does this weird thing like when you move the right thumbstick right and then release it it bounces back <clears throat> ideally it bounces back to where it was it's not perfect though it like Actually, it's doing kind of well right now. But you'll notice it doesn't go right back to center, so it's not... It's, I, I don't know what you would need it for, but it doesn't work very perfectly. So, yeah, there's that. Um, the other thing you can adjust, which is super, super, super useful, since a lot of games are lacking it, like, I don't know why, is Dead Zone. <clears throat> so, I, I didn't say what to do, <clears throat> but click the tool icon, go to Settings, and then you can see dead zone, you can increase dead zone, decrease dead zone, whatever you need to do. 35% usually works well for me, I have a pretty old controller, and 35% keeps me from drifting or ghosting. You can adjust diagonal size, which adjusts the range at which diagonal movement will activate. I recommend just leaving that alone. <clears throat> you can also adjust modes so you can set it where there is no diagonal movement you can set it where it's only diagonal movement but for this to work you'll have to set uh, like up left to that square up right down right down left I'm not gonna do that because I'm never gonna use that and I don't know anybody who will but it's really cool that that's an option that they put the time in to make that an option this is the same as the default mode except you will have to assign up right down right down left up left manually <clears throat> this lacks the diagonal movements again except left and right has a wider range this is the same thing except up and down has a wider range so that's it for the mouse setting I recommend just leaving it here and just playing with dead zone should be all you need to do for most games the last thing I will quickly point out is if you're using a 360 controller you have these triggers if your triggers are messed up for some reason, I don't know if uh, Xbox controller triggers messing up ever. But if they are uh, ghosting or something, you can click this tool icon and then you can adjust the dead zone for each trigger so it won't activate until it crosses into the green. So that's pretty useful if you know your controller's messing up. Mine's not. I don't know of anybody who's had bad triggers, but that's there if you need it. And uh, I can't think of anything else. Uh, that's all That's all that I really wanted to show in this video, and it should make it where you can use XPatter for pretty much any game uh, pretty effectively. You can assign a lot more keys to your controller and play it more like a console, you know, which is what all of us controller users want to do through the PC is make it more console f or we'll make it more controller friendly. Uh, not console like but controller friendly so if this video helped you please hit the thumbs up and let me know how many people got some use out of this video and if you think your friends need this tutorial as well feel free to share it to them because um, the more people who get benefit out of this video the better it makes it more you know worth doing um, if you want to see more of my videos feel free to subscribe I don't do tutorial videos really I do you know gameplays or whatever but if anytime I find something helpful that I want to share with people I'm happy to do a video if you know more useful functions to use XPatter for be, feel free to share and comment and tell me because the more I can use XPatter effectively the happier I am as a PC gamer who uses a controller so please tell me if you know of anything that would be helpful to uh, all of us XPatter users. 
And that's it for this video. So thanks for watching. And I hope it was helpful and that you can get more out of Vexpatter than you could before. And have a great day.